Good morning, children. I am Sarita Yasis. Now I am going to teach you transcription. Transcription is the process of copying of genetic information from DNA to RNA. RNA here is mRNA formed from the segment of DNA. In replication, as I told you, both the strands of the double-stranded DNA are involved or are act as template strand for the formation of new strand. But here in transcription process, for the copying of genetic information or for the formation of mRNA, only one strand is involved. Let's see. So in double-stranded DNA, PS DNA means double-stranded DNA, only one strand, only one strand act as the template strand for the formation of mRNA. Here, from a segment of DNA, three types of RNA are formed. Which are the three types of RNA? mRNA, tRNA and rRNA. Okay, so here, only the genetic informations are copied in mRNA. Okay. And the tRNA acts as an adapter molecule that I will teach you in the transcription of eukaryotes. And sorry, in translation, I will teach you uh, the adapter molecule of tRNA. Then rRNA, ribosomal RNA also. Here it acts as a subunit of translation. Okay, so here the genetic information are copied from the DNA to mRNA. And here the enzyme is RNA polymerase. RNA polymerase enzyme. It is also called a DNA dependent RNA polymerase enzyme. And what was the enzyme for DNA replication? DNA polymerase. DNA dependent DNA polymerase used in replication. That means the DNA dependent DNA polymerase enzyme is used for the polymerization of nucleotides in DNA replication. But for transcription or for the mRNA formation, which enzyme? DNA dependent RNA polymerase. Okay. And next we can see. Suppose this is a single strand and this one is another strand. So it is 5 prime, 3 prime, then 3 prime, 5 prime. So we can see the nucleotides A, G, C, T, A. Here also T that is complementary to each other. So G, C, then A, then T. So as I told you, only one of the strands act as the template strand. Both the strands are not involved in transcription. Suppose this strand is act as a template strand. One thing I want to tell you, the strand which act as a template strand that can make an mRNA which is complementary to the template strand. Okay, the strand which do not take part in transcription and that strand is called a coding strand. Coding strand. So the coding strand do not take part in transcription process. The strand which take part in transcription process in the double stranded DNA is called template strand. Suppose this strand is called for uh, transcription. See what may be the nucleotides. Tell me, we can use another color. Okay. Uh. So, suppose this is a mRNA formed from this template strand. Here, tell me what is the nucleotide here. A always 
stays pair with the thymine, but this is RNA. So instead of thymine, which nitrogen base is that? Uracil. Okay. So here the same site was it? Guanine. Here adenine. But here again uracil. So clear. And have you noticed this newly formed RNA? Three prime, five prime. This newly formed RNA is complementary to or which is actually this is complementary to the template strand and that is similar to the coding strand. Only thymine case is uh, a change is there in the thymine case also and all other cases that is similar to coding strand. Because this coding strand is complementary to the template strand and this newly formed RNA also complementary to the template strand. So the newly formed mRNA is similar to the coding strand except in case of thymine uracil is there. Is it clear? Okay. Next we can see this transcription process occur only in 5 prime, 3 prime direction. Okay. So as in DNA replication also, the replication takes place, the polymerization or extension or adding of nucleotides takes place only in 5 prime, 3 prime direction. Here also, the DNA dependent RNA polymerized enzyme do the polymerization or extension for the formation of mRNA molecule in 5 prime, 3 prime direction. So let's see. Suppose this is the template strand and this one is the coding strand. So, this RNA polymerase enzyme need to polymerize. So, in this template strand, what is the polarity of this template strand then? Because they want to add nucleotides only in 5' prime, 3' prime direction and that must be anti-parallel to the template strand. Am I right? So, the template strand must have 3 prime, 5 prime polarity. Okay. Then only there is a polymerization in 5 prime, 3 prime direction for the formation of mRNA. This is the coding strand. And the coding strand 5 prime, 3 prime. So, in the double stranded DNA, the 3 prime, 5 prime strand act as the template strand because the transcription occur only in 5 prime, 3 prime direction. So, clear. Now, we can see why both the strands of double stranded DNA are not involved in transcription. Very important question. Both the strands of double stranded DSR DNA means double stranded DNA are not copied during transcription. Why? First reason if both the strands for, for RNA, two different RNA molecules are formed and the two molecules are complementary. If they are for protein, two different types of proteins are formed. And two different types of protein means one with the correct sequence of amino acid and another with the incorrect sequence of the same. Hence the genetic information transformationally become complicated. So this is the first reason why two strands are not involved in transcription process. And the second reason if two RNA molecules are synthesized simultaneously, they would be complementary to each other. So the two strands have the tendency to form a double stranded RNA. This prevents the RNA from translation. So the process of transcription would become failure. Is it clear about the reason? Okay. So this, this is the reason for not copied. The two strands not copied for transcription. 
Next we can see the transcription unit. The transcription unit. Which are the units or which are the parts of the transcription in a DNA strand. So here we can see the double stranded DNA with 3 prime, 5 prime polarity and there is a coding strand with the 5 prime, 3 prime polarity and one thing I want to tell you when we talk about 5 prime we can call it as upstream so 5 prime means upstream when we talk about 3 prime we can call it as downstream okay so upstream means 5 prime of fifth the carbon and downstream means third, 3 prime or third carbon okay now we can see which are the transcription unit there are three transcription units. The first one is promoter G. Promoter G. And the second one is structural G. Structural G. And the third one is terminator G. Terminator G. These are the three units of Transcription. So, which are the three units of transcription? Promoter G, structural G, and terminator G. We can see where these genes can be located in this double stranded DNA. So, here the segment of DNA, we can see this promoter G. So, this is the promoter G. So the promoter G can be seen on the th 3 prime of the template strand and the 5 prime of the coding strand. So this is the template strand. So this is the, that you know, that you can write over here. This is the template strand and this is the coding strand. So this promoter G, this is the promoter promoter G start from the 3 prime and it is located towards the upstream of the coding strand. Upstream means 5 prime of the coding strand. Okay. So, this promoter G the function of this promoter G how we can define this promoter G promoter G is a segment of DNA on the template strand that is located towards the upstream of the coding strand. Okay, so what is promoter G? Promoter G is a segment of DNA on the template strand and that is located towards the upstream of the coding strand. Actually, this is the segment which can recognize or which can bind the RNA polymerase for polymerization. The enzyme can bind the place on the template strand and that segment is called a promoter G. So the promoter gene bind the RNA polymerase enzyme. Okay. And next to the promoter gene we can see an area which is called a structural gene. Structural gene. This is the segment of template strand or DNA in which the transcription occur. Okay. And this structural gene consists of a functional unit which is called cistron. So cistrons are the segment, a small segment of DNA, segment of DNA code for polypeptide. Code for polypeptide. And we can call it as, it is the smallest functional unit of DNA. Or we can call it as, smallest functional unit of DNA. Where this histone can be seen? In the place of structural G on the template strand. Okay. And this is towards, in case of eukaryotes, only 
one cystone is there for transcription. So the eukaryotes are called a monocystonic. Monocystonic. Only one cystones are there with eukaryotes. Okay. But in prokaryotes, they are polycystonic. That means in the structural gene, several cystones are there with prokaryotes. So they are polycystonic. But in eukaryotes, only one cystone is there in the structural gene. So the eukaryotes are monocystonic. Is it clear? And another thing I want to tell you about this monocystonic monocystronic as I told you it is a feature of eukaryotes only that means only one cystone is there in the structural gene and this monocystronic consists of two regions exons and introns the exons are part for polypeptide but introns do not take part in the polypeptide coding Okay, so the gene which consists of both exons and introns are called split genes. Split genes. Okay, so the gene which consists of exons and introns are called a split genes. So we can say the split genes are there in the eukaryotes. Okay, and this exons only code for the polypeptide, introns do not take part. They do not express, they are not the expressed sequence of DNA. Okay, next we can see, okay, structural G, we learn about structural G. In the structural G, the cystone may be monocystonic or polycystonic, monocystonic in eukaryotes and polycystonic in prokaryotes. And which is the third unit, terminator G. Terminator G is present over here. It is present in the 5' prime of the template strand and downstream of the coding strand. Downstream is 3' prime or 3rd carbon of the coding strand. That is the downstream. Okay. So, terminator region or terminator G defines the end of the transcription. So the promoter gene initiates the transcription process and the original transcription takes place in the structural gene on the template strand and it stops or the end of the transcription takes place in the terminator gene. Okay, so the terminator gene present in the 5' prime of the template strand and it located towards the downstream or 3' prime of the coding strand. Is it clear, clear about the transcription unit? Okay. And next I will show you the video. DNA. DNA contains genes. A gene is a continuous string of nucleotides containing a region that codes for an RNA molecule. This region begins with a promoter and ends in a terminator. Genes also contain regulatory sequences that can be found near the promoter or at a more distant location. Motor region of the gene functions as a recognition site for RNA polymerase to bind. This is where the majority of gene expression is controlled by either permitting or blocking access to this site by the RNA polymerase. Binding causes the DNA double helix to unwind and open. Then during elongation, the RNA polymerase slides along the template DNA strand. As the complementary bases pair up, the RNA polymerase links nucleotides to the three prime end of the growing RNA molecule. Once the RNA polymerase reaches the terminator portion of the gene, the messenger RNA transcript is complete, and the RNA polymerase, the DNA strand, and the messenger RNA transcript dissociate from each other. The strand of messenger RNA that is made during transcription includes regions called exons that code for a protein, and non-coding 
coding sections called introns. In order for the messenger RNA to be so as I told you, the exons and introns are there in the newly formed mRNA. So exon only caught for translation or protein synthesis, but introns do not take part. So here, this exons or exons want to be joined together and introns want to be removed. So the introns need to be removed for translation process. And this is called the post transcription modification. And the process of removal of introns is called splicing. So, splicing is the process of removal of introns and joining the exons together. It is done by the enzyme spliceosome. Okay. Then, some additional modifications also done that is. Capping and tailing that I'll teach you in transcription eukaryotes. That region I'll teach you. Okay, let's see the video. Used in translation, the non coding introns need to be removed, and modifications such as a 5' cap and a 3' poly A tail are added. This process is called intron splicing and is performed by a complex made up of proteins and RNA called a spliceosome. This complex removes the intron segments and joins the adjacent exons to produce a mature messenger RNA string that can leave the nucleus through a nuclear pore and enter the cytoplasm to begin translation. transcription process, base of transcription process. Hope you understood everything about the transcription unit and the process of transcription. In the next class we can see the transcription in prokaryotes and the eukaryotes. That's all for today. Thank you.